We've been talking about simple geometrical objects. Uh, <clears throat> our discussions have been restricted to uh, uh, an analysis of geological objects that we can assume are roughly spherical in shape. And we've talked a good bit about this term. This is the uh, shape term. <clears throat> And what we'd want to do now would be to take a look at this expression, which gives us the value of g max. This would be the peak of the anomaly. And um, you can see that it has parameters such as delta rho, the density contrast, between that object and or the object of interest and the surrounding um, uh, strata. Uh, the radius of the sphere and the depth to the center of the sphere at a point directly over it. So we're interested now in just taking a look at what additional information we can get from here and I think you know based on the parameters that we see <clears throat> in the expression we can obviously we've got three unknowns here but this one, remember, that we are able to determine from an analysis of the shape function. And so we really only have two unknowns. And based on your understanding of the geology, you may have some idea of what R might be, uh, you know, some structure, some salt dome, some sulfide deposit, uh, based on the lithology of the object you think you're looking for, you may have some information about delta rho. <clears throat> so you never really go into an interpretation completely blind. You have geological information. You may feel confident about delta rho and solve for R. Or you may feel confident about the scale of the object and solve for delta rho. So that, as before, we have, um, <clears throat> when we talked about the plate correction, for, for example, we had these constants uh, that we came up with that allowed us to mix units. And uh, we, we do the same thing here with um, uh, the calculation of G max. We can collapse these constants into, um, we can collapse these variables or these, well, actually these constants into another constant which allows us to mix units, and the units that we mix are, in this case, in this formula, with the constant 0 0.02795. Uh, <clears throat> we're able to put R and Z in in meters, and delta rho in grams per cubic centimeter. Grams per cubic centimeter is, you know, that's, the, those are the numbers that you get from a uh, geophysical log. Uh, <clears throat> so we're inputting R cubes, E squared, and meters. Uh, here we're doing it in feet, R and Z in feet. And we have the variable 0 0.00, the constant 0 0.00852, which is just 0 0.00275 divided by 3.28. But <clears throat> So that's what we have over here. Uh, these expressions are solutions for the radius or the density contrast based on whether we're solving in meters, you know, using meters for R and Z, or whether we're using feet uh, for R and Z in this expression. So, of course, our task is to, we know what Z is. We've gotten Z from the analysis of the shape function. We're now interested to get information about the scale of the object in terms of R or the density contrast with the surrounding medium. So these are the equations that you would use uh, depending on the whether the, the uh, <clears throat> depths and dimensions are in feet or whether they're in meters. So you can go through this yourself. You can you know just calculate this out. This is remember this is 6.6732 times 10 to the minus third uh, kilogram per meter second squared times four thirds times pi, and you get 2.795 times 10 to the minus tenth. And I didn't put the units in there, but they would be kilogram meters per second squared. 
uh, we multiply that by 10 to the fifth. You know, these this this factor is 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 established because we want to get uh, we want to be able to put G max in in terms of milligauss. So we have to adjust this constant. We have to multiply it by 10 to the fifth, and to, to, in order to get a result in milligauss, and or in order to have our input in milligauss and by 1,000, in order to ha have the density input in grams per cubic centimeter. So uh, that's an exercise I'd recommend that you go through, you know, just to see that you come up with the um, uh, same constants. But you know, obviously here we have 10 to the tenth times 10 to the uh, 10 to the eighth, and that gives us uh, 2.7 795 times 10 to the minus 2. And you could do the same for uh, other calculations of R and delta rho with uh, Z and R input in feet. So to illustrate an application, we just consider the following problem. We've detonated a uh, nuclear bomb at a depth of 500 meters beneath the surface. Uh, you know, you conduct a gravity survey over the area, you don't really feel like tunneling in to get a sense for how big the cavity you've produced might be. Uh, <clears throat> and you, you know, you run your gravity survey, you've got a point four, minus 0.45 milligal anomaly across the site. Uh, and so the question would be, what is the radius uh, of the cavity? And you have a sense for what the, if you assume that it's just a completely evacuated, uh, nearly spherically shaped chamber, then we would assume that the, that the density contrast would be a negative 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter, assuming that the surrounding rock, the surrounding strata on average had a density of 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter. So we're, we're just plugging into this expression. We have Z uh, in, in meters <clears throat> and delta rho in grams per cubic centimeter. And, um, you know, this particular example just emphasizes that we can have anomalies that are both negative and positive, and we can use the same, same rules. So, uh, we've already figured out Z, so we've already gone through the curve analysis here. Uh, we're just plugging in for minus 0.45 milligals, that's the uh, maximum, or should say minimum in this case. And our depth is 500 meters squared. We have our constant in here because we're working in meters. And this is our density contrast. So we're mixing units and um, delta rho, grams per cubic centimeter, g and milligals. So take a moment and um, uh, think, you know, make sure you understand the setup here, uh, go through the solution, and uh, if you do, uh, you should find that R is about 115 meters. So you've, you, you've got a cavity which is about, uh, extends from about 385 meters above the surface to, or um, below the surface to 615 meters beneath the surface. 230 meters in diameter. So here we have a positive anomaly. We've just flipped over. <clears throat> but assume that you're trying to locate a sulfide deposit. Uh, you know something about the scale of the deposits in the region. You've encountered them before. You've mined them before. You have that kind of information. Uh, maybe the quality of the sulf sulfide is, is revealed in terms of its density. You know, the, the region may have a density of approximately 4.5 grams per cubic centimeter. And we've, we're also using the value Z that we determined earlier. So the question now is to determine delta rho. <clears throat> is it really a sulfide deposit or is it something else? So we're using this mixed units form. Again, we're working in meters. These are our givens. Our G max is 0.45 milligals. Z, 500 meters. R, 130 meters. This is the formula we need to solve. We just, we're just plugging in these, 
these values over here and doing a, a running through the arithmetic and we come up with this 1.83 grams per cubic centimeter and scratch our heads oh whoa no that doesn't really that's not for that's not 4.5 grams per cubic centimeter this must be something else but remember this is delta rho <clears throat> that we're computing and uh, so the delta rho is 1.83 grams per cubic centimeter the anomaly is positive so we must have to add this to 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter. Not a sulfide deposit? Well, better keep going with that. Uh, delta rho again, 1.83 given density of the surrounding rock, 2.65. Uh, we get a density of 4.48 and yes, it certainly does appear, if our estimate of the dimensions is correct, it certainly appears that we have a uh, uh, an object down there that has about the right density. Could be a sulfide deposit. So <clears throat> that's how we've you know been using simple geometrical objects to we've we've only been talking about the sphere. Uh, we'll talk about other objects like vertical cylinders and um, oh uh, um, We've already done the horizontal plate. We'll talk about um, uh, ver vertical plane-like um, distributions and uh, some other objects briefly. But I think you know this the sphere really illustrates the nuts and bolts of of our analysis. Yeah, the horizontal cylinder, for example, vertical cylinder, uh, half plates, and uh, uh, so in this case, we've shown that, uh, well, we can look at the anomaly. We can determine what the depth to the center of the object is. Uh, given the relationships that we develop, we can determine the radius, the relative density. Um, so it's useful. It, it just requires uh, some back-of-the-envelope calculations. But most importantly, it requires a good understanding of the geology. So you have to be able to put together a pl plausible hypothesis. Uh, you have to know something about the area in order to come up with maybe an idea about what the radius should be or what the relative density contrast should be. Uh, you have to be relatively certain that this could be a sphere if you're going to use these formulas. We're, we're a roughly equ equidimensionally shaped object. So you have to know something about the geological setting. And we're going to, as we said, we'll take a look at some additional ge geometrical objects, but for the time being, we're going to talk, we're going to shift gears and talk about the residual gravity anomaly. And so we'll come back to geometrical objects uh, later on. Uh, thanks for joining us. See you next time.